That's key. Like <laughs> lads. Yeah, they're all great lads. Don't worry about football results. Ones are all great lads. I'd rather work with bad lads who put a shift in and run. They're all great lads. They all can be great lads. I know it's a, an awkward question for He's not going to say they're not he good lads. He said a good group. A good group. Yeah. Well, that's not great either, is it? Yeah, and what's he's in the position as well. Yeah. If he, what's, if he, what's a good group? If he keeps him, if Amarin comes in and says, you know what, I want to keep you rude as one of my assistants, he can't then turn around and say, no, they're not a good bunch of guys. He has to say that. He's got no choice. But I don't know what, what Amarin's plans are. Is he going to bring his own staff in? Is he going to maybe want Ruud van Nistelrooy on, on the, in the staff as a well, number two? Well, look, let's take a look at, at Manchester United's big problem area, which is scoring goals. That's been a massive issue for them so far this, this season. It's been a bit longer term than that as well. So if this is their, their problem area, if the, you know, they're 18th in terms of goals, 20th in terms of XG performance, so they're not creating the, the quality chances, and then when they get them, their shot conversion is 19, so they're not, they're not converting those chances either. And if it's a big chance, they're even lower again. So if that's your problem, do you then keep a club legendary striker on your books can that can that help i don't know the best person to ask in this out of us for is a goal scorer i mean did you have someone to work with you with training did didier drogba have someone does that make a big difference if you had someone educating no, you or I finishing don't, i don't think it directly relates and i'm not putting rude down there i'm sure he's very very capable um of of working with attacking players to finish but any coach worth their salt should be um the thing that interests me when we look at the stats of that start is anyone really surprised that that's what the first 10 games look like from, from what last season? I know they won the FA Cup, I'm not holding that back, but I think this has been coming. I don't think there's anything really that anyone's particularly surprised about because last season, when you, took, when you look at how they were, were they good defensively? No. Were they that great attacking? Probably better than how they started this season, but still no. Have they addressed it with personnel that have come in to improve it? No. So are you really surprised about it now? So this is where now it is a, it is a fresh start. It has to be some sort of a line in the sand. But turn the corner. Yeah, but no matter who's coaching or managing, if you're missing, well, if you look at the game last week at West Ham, the chances, the chances United should have scored definitely at least three or four goals in the first half last week. So whatever about having a brilliant striker like Rude on your staff, whatever it might be, these, you know, these are players, these are international players, and they're missing them chances. Today, listen, they weren't really clear cut chances, but they were good chances. You're still thinking the top player might go, just and I just need half a chance, and we're not seeing that with this group. So I don't think that's necessarily done who you've got in the coach and stuff. That's sometimes about, we mentioned earlier about looking at young, young Chelsea players, give them a chance, but then there comes a point where you go, we can't keep, Man United can't keep waiting for these players to mature and say mm. he'll be good in 12 or 18 months. Maybe other clubs can, but Man United can't. And that's where the new manager will have to come in and identify that and say, listen, I have to get strikers in. And guess what that means? More recruitment, mm. more players. And United have spent a fortune over the last two or three years and their track record on recruitment has not been great this manager will have to come in and if that continues we'll say I'll have to get a couple of attacking players and strikers maybe players he's worked with and find more money but that hasn't gone down well buying players he worked with here is it certainly well, with Ten Hag that's been a not. problem but the, the greatest comparison I suppose we can give is what happened at Jur with Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool they went they suffered for so long 30 odd years without winning a title and this is similar with what's happened at Man United so when you saw what Klopp's team looked like to start with to what he got to in, in two or three years it developed very, very quickly with good recruitment. You know, the goalkeeper coming in, Allison, Virgil van Dijk, Salah. But they were great in their recruitment. They didn't, you know, that they were diligent. They spent well. They bought in players that could change the game for and them. They were and patient. All of a sudden, they were patient, patient waiting for the right players. But yeah. also good people. Good people that trained hard every day, set good examples. That's why it's been easier for Arna Slot. So he's going to take, he's got to have a couple of years at least. And that's why, obviously, with his contract situation, everyone's going, why only two years? He has to look at what he's got at his disposal. Who, how many of these players are going to want to come with me? As Roy says, how many would you want to be in the trenches? If you looked at the 11, or the squad today, I'm not sure there's too many you're going to see in a few years in that starting 11. I, I really don't. I think there's going to have to be a, a quick turnover. Now, I think. Bruno said it himself, it's easier to sack managers to get rid of players. But I don't see too many there that you'll be going, he's at home watching that video today or watching it going, I mean, oh, cool, he'll do me, he'll do me. There's not many of them. And we talk about the running, sorry, but it's also been smart, you're running. I don't mean you run around like headless chickens and everyone's covering 13 or 14 kilometres. You have to be smart with it, but when you are running and you're closing teams down, you do it as a team. But it's all individuals just sprinting to someone, they're playing around in the spaces, everyone. That's where they, they, they lack that 
they don't look like a team at it. They're just all doing their own little bit. And the, and the issue, sorry, with scoring goals is that, um, talk about Jurgen Klopp and Mo Salah as an example, there's no way that Jurgen Klopp had to get Mo when he signed him to Liverpool and go, and what you do is you cut inside <laughs> in that far top corner <laughs> yeah. and do it again and then take him the other way and do that. You don't do that. What Jurgen Klopp's job is to set a team up and get the best out of his best players mm -hmm. and give them an idea that you go, this is what, and we all know what they were. That's great coaching. So this is what now the test of the new manager will be. You go, here I am, and if he can show progression to the end of the season, whatever that looks like, I think he'll have a good case to sit down in the summer and go, OK, owners, what are you going to support me? Because I need that, 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 if you really want to go to the level. And the ones that haven't delivered, then they're not there. That would be the test for the coach. Because I, I think you said you like Hoyland, you said. Mm. And, but I have to be honest, I, I, it must be so hard playing as a centre forward in this team because you're working on scraps. You're not getting any supply line. No one's, there's no clever passes for you. He's having to wrestle against two defenders every time the ball comes up to him. So I don't really know what his level is. What's his ceiling? He had a good spell last year. I think he went seven goals. He scored seven and seven. And you thought, OK, he's turned the corner. But playing in this team, it's not easy for a centre forward right now. So maybe with a bit more confidence and a different style, a structure, we might see a, a better... Because there will be one or two that jump out of you that are going to surprise us all. But it's just hard to tell right now because they're so devoid of confidence. What, what would you do if you were Amory in terms of your, your coaching staff? Obviously, he'll have his, his own backroom staff that he wants to bring with him. Do you think he keeps Ruud van Nesteroy? That's a good question. I don't know. The truth is, I don't know, Kelly. If he wants... I, I, I always... But if, if Ruud was looking to get the job and he wanted the job, I personally would... I always think you want number twos that don't want your job. I think you want to work with people that are just going to come in. They're your man. When you go on that bus on the way home and you've been chinned, they've got to feel every bit of pain you do not thinking, well, if we lose a few more, I might have a chance of getting the job. That's not what you want. And I see a lot of number twos that sort of hang around like bad smells. When managers get sacked, they stay there. That's not for me. I always think you want to get your staff that are going to be... They feel your pain every time you lose. So I don't, I don't know what Rude wants to do. I agree with all that. But we look back in the summer when there was changes in the background. Who brought Rude to the club? Was it United? Was it the manager? Because there was a lot of changes in the background. So it depends on, has, has Ruud, does Rude feel he's got loyalty to Den Haag? Or does he say, well, actually, it was the, comp, the club that brought me in. But uh, I agree, I think it's difficult when a new, a new manager comes in. If he's bringing a lot of his own staff, maybe there won't be a place for Rude. And maybe Rude would be better off then stepping back, because it's, it's not easy. If, if he feels any loyalty to Den Haag, I always feel it's difficult to stay on. But we mentioned loyalty last week. You want loyalty, obviously, we get a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the, the <laughs> I think the manager manager if he comes in with his own staff, which I, I sort of predict he will do, I would think if he's got a group that he's enjoyed working with and had success, he'll bring them in because they'll know his way. He'll they'll, he'll feel like they've got his back. But I think what he has to do as well is bring, breathe a lot of positive energy into this place because I'm looking at as much as we're saying you need to run. He'll have to set down all those things. They need to run more and be this stuff. <coughs> but there needs to be. I don't think that uh, people are enjoying coming in and playing and they enjoying going to work. Get a sense that they're not. So I think he'll come in with a lot of sort of confident, fresh energy into the place. And yeah. then we'll see. And uh, yeah, there's, there's always there's always noises around Man United. And you hear about the background, the changes, and letting people go and letting great servants of the club go and stuff like this. But you just worry also about the morale in the background, the staff. You know, people are losing their jobs and pay cuts, and, and maybe that the, the energy has been lost at United a little bit. You don't feel it around the stadium, and you know, again, long way back on that side of it.